ocean You may search down the deep blue sea But mama you won't find another hot child like me I follow my baby From the station to the train And the blues came down like dark night showers of rain I left her at the station Praying in my hands and crying Told her she got a home Just as long as I got mine I've got two women And you can tell them apart I got one in my bosom And the other one in my heart The one in my bosom she down in Tennessee And the other one in my heart She don't give a darn for me Alright, that was Searching for the Desert for the Blues Recorded in 1932 by Blind Willie McTell So we're continuing on in uh, learning these McTell lessons In conjunction with my new ebook release Blind Willie McTell Pre-War Recordings which is now available on my website store, deltalumusic.com. Check it out. This new ebook features nine selections from McTell in standard tuning across four different keys. Once you get through this book, you'll be able to master the other songs uh, um, that he plays across his repertoire. This is this ebook, I'm telling you guys, is, is probably the crown jewel of my collection of ebooks taking the most complicated things and transposing it to it to a simple easy to follow structure uh, this ebook features lyrics for all the songs beautiful chord diagrams uh, note for note tablature breakdowns of all the introductions verses um, choruses whatnot and um, if you want to see a sample of my ebooks check out my free downloads page on my website all right so enough babbling on there um, thanks again for continuing on in the lessons with McTell. We're keeping it going. Right now we're learning our uh, sixth song out of nine. So I've put together five lessons already with McTell. Um, Searching the Desert for the Blues is going to be played in the key of E. So a prerequisite to watching this, you should definitely check out my writing paper blues and also my drive away blues because elements from both of those songs will appear in this lesson. <clears throat> all right. Um, so to begin, all you need is an acoustic guitar for now. McTell played exclusively on the 12 string guitar, but for learning purposes, let's stick to a six string because a 12 string guitar is not necessarily accessible all the time. Don't play an electric guitar for these purposes of learning. Um, I like to utilize plastic finger picks for my thumb, index, and middle finger. This is again optional. I have frail fingers, so these picks allow me to um, pick out the notes with a crisp tonality so you could be able to hear it. Um, another thing to have, again, the ebook. When I conduct these lessons, I'm following along my ebook. I'm reading page by page and I'm breaking down what I'm seeing there. So it's very easy to understand. If you learn easier with tablature, definitely check out this ebook. All right. And um, also, a prerequisite to learning my music is watching my beginning finger picking blues volumes one through four. I talk about right hand techniques, finger picking essentials. Um, if you followed along with my lessons already, you should be familiar with finger picking already, but it's something that needs to be established. Um, to, to, uh, to get started, we need to talk about the right hand position. Like always, take the outer lining in the palm of your hand, rest it, and let it dampen over the sixth and fifth strings. Your thumb is gonna jut out and hover above the fifth string, the top of that. The thumb is going to be responsible for playing these uh, alternating accompaniment patterns on the 6th, 5th, and 4th strings. And then the middle, the index and the middle finger are going to pick the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd strings, the treble strings, in conjunction with the thumb. So you're going to have these kind of um, pinches, pinches of finger padding, uh, finger picking. And, and that's my technique. And that's something you can learn from the beginning uh, finger picking volumes, which is also available on my website for free. Check out the free downloads page. So 
So I need to always get that out of the way. In learning McTell's music, you, you can figure out that tuning is essential learning his music. We're focusing on his pre-war recordings. We are not focusing on anything to feature out of his Atlanta 12-string album from 1949 because he, had, in his old age then, for some reason, tended to down-tune his strings even lower than when we, what we've been used to. But in order to play McTell's music, you'll, oh, you'll have to drop those machine heads down from E standard down to keys like D standard, C sharp, and then if you want to get even bold, he goes all the way down to F in some songs. All right, so Searching the Desert for the Blues from 1932 is tuned in standard C tuning. So initially, a guitar will always be tuned in E standard, well, now you're going to down-tune your machine head two whole steps, past D, down to C. So the, the top string is going to be C. Additionally, uh, McTell liked to play a semitone up from wherever he's tuned at. So you'll down-tune your guitar to C center tuning, and then you'll take and... Um, Tune the machine head up, a semitone up. So you're going to be in between C and C sharp, right in the middle. So if you have a tuner, instead of being in the middle, you're going to be right on the um, in between. That marker is going to be all the way to the right. You're a semitone up. This is imperative get, to get down because this is exactly what he's doing in the original recording. My lessons are intended for you to play along with the original recording to be in unison with pitch with McTell in case you wanted to study furthermore. All right, so my top string going is going from an E down to C and then tune additionally a semitone up from C. So my top string is going to be a C plus. So go ahead and play on your end to match up with me. Or if you have a tuner, do the same. It's my top string. A C plus. My fifth string is going to be an F, an F plus. My fourth string is going to be a B flat plus. My third string is going to be a D sharp plus or an E flat plus. D sharp plus. My next string is going to be a G plus. And then finally my bottom string is going to be a C plus. So the songs that also appear in this family of compositions are also Talking to Myself Blues and Lord Send Me an Angel. He's playing essentially the same pattern composition. Is Talking to Myself Blues and Lord Send Me an Angel is the other one. Talking to Myself Blues is in standard C-sharp tuning, uh, and this song is in standard C tuning, and then Lord Send Me an Angel is actually down, down to a standard A tuning. So right now we're in C, he goes even lower, and he's the top string will eventually become A. That's if you wanted to follow along with those songs. But when we learn these McTell songs, he repeats these ideas across his repertoire. So in, I encourage you to listen to his works and pick out with the ear as we've been following on with these lessons. All right. No more babbling on there. <laughs> All right. So now that we've got the tuning set up, uh, we've got the um, finger picking, all of the, the things you need to get going. We need to talk about what are the chords that are going to feature here. So in all, in essence, there's, uh, there are six chords in, across this whole song. 
and the, the, there, if you look at the first page, you have the chord diagram set right out in front of you. The, f the first chord in the song is going to be an E major chord, but played kind of differently here. You you're essentially will finger what you would have like a D major chord, but you're going to now shift that and move it over to the 4th and 5th fret, which is kind of basically like a uh, variation of an E chord, E major chord. And to do that, you are fingering the with the index finger, you're fingering the third string, fourth fret. The middle finger is coming down to the fourth fret bottom string, and then the ring finger is playing the fifth uh, fret second string. So that's something different than what we're used to. And then the next chord in that sequence is going to be this combination of a long B and B7 chord. So in my previous lessons we talked about a long A7, long D and D7, and then long E and E7. Well now he's doing it over a B major chord. And in order to do that, you will need to bar, like we have in the past, you're barring, you're finding the fourth fret and you're barring it with your index finger from the fourth string down. Your, your uh, pinky and your middle finger are going to be available to play the B major chord and then the B7 chord. So while you're barring this down, the pinky is going to come and play the bottom string on the seventh fret, making it a B major. And then the middle finger will play the fifth fret bottom string, making it a B7. So we have E and then B, B7, and then he plays these long A and A7 chords. So again, you're barring the second fret, and then with the pinky, you're playing the bottom string, fifth fret. And then the middle finger comes and plays the bottom string on the third fret. A, A7, and then. Um, and then alternately he plays the E major chord, and then he plays a C sharp seven chord, and then a B seven, back to E. So those are the, the chords you will, you will get used to. Again, it's laid out nicely here uh, on the first page, and first and second page in this ebook. So let's go ahead and start at the, in uh, the introduction or the verse. This is gonna be a quick lesson. All right, so this is the uh, the first the introduction the introduction where he doesn't sing, and and they will sound like this. Basically, the introduction it, it will be repeated across the uh, the remaining stanzas. So once we get through this, it will just basically will be done with the lesson. So again, it's the succession of chords. And then the first chord is going to be this E chord based here on the 4th and 5th fret. So we talked about earlier that D major chord, we're shifting it over to the 4th and 5th fret. And, um, well, I'll just play this introduction from front to back. So, again, it's like this. And I'll go a little faster. All right. And in order to do that, go ahead and finger this E chord, this E variation chord. You're going to stop, you're going to start by playing the top string open. And then you're going to, either with the index finger or with the thumb, just strum loosely. So it's one, two, then back to the top string open, and then and strum a few more times. So it's one, two, one, one, two, three, four, 
five. Is, is this introduction. So one, two, three, four, five, and then he does uh, three strums of this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is that E chord. And then he, he goes from E to this long B7 chord. So right away he's going to bar the fourth fret from the fourth string down, the fourth fret. And he's just gonna play in this sequence. He'll just play the fourth, third, and second strings while barring this as this note. He'll play that once and then he'll go right away to this long B, B major chord. So it's one, two, three. You play that and then you take the pinky off and play the second string uh, fourth fret. This finger will always remain stationary and bar the fourth fret. And then after he plays that second string fourth fret, he'll play two strums of the B7 chord. Your um, index or uh, ring finger will come and play the bottom string fifth fret and play that twice. So the sequences in the B chords are one, two, three, four, five. All right, and that transition from the E chord, you play that introduction, and that's how that sounds, and I'll go a little slower again with this uh, introduction in E, now when I go to B, it's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Very simple. So there's five notes there. One, two. And then he goes into the, the long A, A7 chord. And you can either do this um, bass succession of notes, which we've talked about in the previous two songs, Writing Paper Blues and Drive Away Blues, where you play the top string open, followed by the fifth string open. And then you lock in those A chords, or you just play an open string on the fifth string, just to play that A note. So I have it tabbed up where it tabbed in the ebook where it's just the fifth string open. So, so from, he goes from this B7 into A and he from this B7 he goes to the open string on the fifth string and he bars the second fret from the fourth string down and you're gonna play from the fourth, third, and second strings play that once, then f follow that up by the, uh, the fifth string open again. So this sequence in A is one, two, three. And then the next part of that is the other half of that and what he's doing there is you're you're continuing to bar the second fret from the fourth string down and you play all the strings fourth third second and first strings as the first note there then you play the a7 uh, chord bottom string third fret the middle finger comes up then you take that middle finger off again and play that bar again fourth string down and then you end 
while barring this down, you take the pinky and you play the uh, fifth uh, fret second string, which we've talked about in Drive Away Blues and Riding Paper Blues. So that sequence sounds like this. One, two, three, four. So in all, the sequences in A are a combination of seven notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven. Again, one, two, three. So uh, from the the absolute beginning of the introduction, it's uh, you play this E chord, then the B chord, so let me do that one more time. And that's a little bit fast, <coughs> but now I'm going to go really slow, so it's this E chord, then to B7, then to A. So that's that A chord of, consisting of seven notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that ends. So those are the first three chords of that. So let's take a little bit break because now we're gonna go into this part. And that, there's a lot going on there. So again, very straightforward and easy, those chords. And you're just finger picking uh, strategically. So let's go, out, go ahead and move on to the next part. All right, so the next part of this introduction will sound like this. Again, it's all right so less last where we left off we were on this a chord which sounded like this and immediately after he plays this part Right after that, he starts going, he plays this turnaround uh, based out of the fifth string. So it's like a bass turnaround. It's like a chromatic, uh, chromatic rundown on the fretboard, starting on the fifth string fourth fret. Then you play the fifth string third fret and fifth string second fret. One, two, three. One, two, three. And after that, he plays this typical lick on the E major chord where he's sort of holding the E chord here and then the index finger is going to, is going to flick the third string open while holding the E major chord. You take that first finger off and you flick the uh, third string open and then you hammer on the first fret third string and while you're doing that you then go to the bottom string open one two three one two one two three one two three then you end with the top string open one two three four so so in all together it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And when he t plays that top string open, he then plays an E major chord. After, right after that. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is 
is that part. So that's where the E major chord comes into play. And then the other part of that, he's taking elements from the St. Louis turnaround, which we talked about in Writing Paper Blues and Drive Away Blues. <clears throat> and, and here, for example, he plays it a little bit different. He bypasses the second and third fret completely. He does not play the C7 chord at all here. But he goes right into this C sharp 7 chord. And here he, he, instead of in the past, we talked about the index finger comes off and you just play the notes on the um, single fret there. He's actually holding it down. So to do that, to finger a C sharp 7, if you look at the chord diagram, you kind of want to finger like a B7, like you would usually, and then shift over into the third and fourth fret. Instead of the first and second fret, you slide over to the third and fourth fret, maintaining the same fingering. And to do this, he's going to play uh, the bass note out of this triad first, which is going to be obviously the fifth string on the fourth fret. He plays that first, followed by the actual full chord. So it's one, two, with the thumb. So he, he, he does that, and then he shifts over to play an actual B7 chord with all of the fingering. And, and, and then he plays the second uh, fret fifth string. Again, the bass note out of that triad, and then followed by the B7 chord. So, and, so there's gonna be four notes in all, and it's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four. And then you resolve on the E major chord. One, two, And when you put it all together, it'll sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And I'll go again real slow. that part in the introduction. It will be difficult when you have to sing over that. There's a lot happening, but uh, you'll get it down, Pat. All right, and so the, the, the final part of this song, he comes back to the lick that we learned in Drive Away Blues. <laughs> Again, he's extracting notes out of this E blue scale in the first position. And in order to play this lick, you will finger the E major chord, and then the index, the index and middle finger will, will pick out those notes on the treble strings, and the pinky and the index finger are going to come off to play those uh, notes that feature out of this riff. So the, uh, the first eight notes here. The first three will sound like this. You'll uh, hold the E chord, and then the pinky will will uh, will play the notes accordingly. The first note is the bottom string open. Then you play with the pinky the third fret second string. Then you play the second string open. One, two, three. Then you shift up to the 3rd string, 3rd fret. Then the pinky comes and plays the 3rd string, 2nd fret. And then you will play this lick on the E major chord where you're holding the E chord and then you flick the open string on the 3rd string. And then come with the 1st uh, fret, 3rd string with the index finger. And then you resolve on the four string second fret. So in all, this riff sounds like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is 
that classic rig from Driveway Blues. So once he ends on that second fret, he comes and plays the bottom string open, followed by the top string open. So th there was our ten notes in all. Again, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those ten notes, drive away blues. And this is something that he loves to come back to as a way to cap off uh, stanzas as he leads into the next stanza he'll always play this lick so after those uh, ten notes he then plays uh, he sits on the E major chord for a while and he plays um, the top string open followed by two strum combos on the E major chord One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And that's the end of the introduction. And then he repeats everything that we've learned so far against the remaining stanzas. So now. We'll go over the first stanza and we'll apply where the words fit into all of this. So that's going to be the tricky part. So stay tuned. All right, so the first stanza will we'll start off like this. You may search the ocean. You may go out the deep blue sea. But mama, you won't find another hot child like me. I followed my baby. From the depot to the train And the blues came down like dark night showers of rain Alright, so we'll talk about the first stanza, You May Search the Ocean Is here he's coming into this, this E chord And in the introduction he sat on it a little longer But in this first stanza he, he plays it a little shorter So there's a combination of four strums here You play the top string open then play strum once, play the top string again, and then strum it three times. And this is the part where it goes, you may search. In the lyrics, you may search. You may search. And then we shifts into this B and B7 chord, he'll say the word the ocean. And uh, it will sound, uh, from the beginning, it's you may search. The ocean may search the ocean ocean so it's that bar on the fourth fret and then the B major chord ocean you may search the ocean then he goes into this A chord you may go press the deep and that goes like this, you may sir, you might go across the deep blue sea, deep blue sea, deep blue sea. And, and it's this four uh, note combo. And that's the part where he's singing, cross the deep blue sea, deep blue sea, deep blue sea. So from the beginning it's you may search the ocean, you may search down the deep blue sea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You may go across the deep blue sea. You may search the ocean. You may go across the deep that's where he sings there and then in this portion of this uh, bass rundown he'll say but mom but um, let me play that one more time 
the deep blue sea, but you may. So he starts this bass wind down, and he'll say, but mama, you'll never find. He'll, he'll begin singing it probably when he's around the uh, second fret of his string. So it's a... But mama, but mama, you may never find. And that, that's going to be a little bit tricky here. So I'll play it fast just to kind of derive when the, the voicings come in. So it's a... You may show down a deep blue sea, but mama, you may never find. But mama, you may never find. But you may find. It's it's sort of like he starts to sing, but mama, you you'll never find when he's going from the second fret fifth string to this lick on E. But mama, you may never find. But you may find. But mama, you never find. But you may find. But you may find. He plays the E chord there. It's, it's a little bit tricky there. Um, And then in the part where he goes, another hot child like me, he'll go into the C sharp 7 chord, another hot shot like me, another hot shot like me, another hot shot like me, is where he sings that. And then he ends on this lick again. So then we go to the next stanza and it's I follow my baby from the station to the train and the blues came down like dark night showers of rain. Then the next stanza is I left her at the station wringing my hands and crying told her she got her home as long as I got mine <clears throat> and again it's when you notice in this bass it's again he starts to sing at the end of that bass note and in transition of that E chord so in that last one is told us she got a home just as long as I got mine And the last one is, I've got two women, and you can tell them apart. Told her, uh, I got one in the bosom and the other one in my heart. The one in my bosom, she's down in Tennessee, and the other one, she don't give a darn for me. So that's really the only complicated intricacy in the song is the the poor the part getting the singing down right at this juncture will take some work all right so that's kind of the essence of searching the desert for the blues and then you repeat all of this these composition structures against the remaining stanzas and there are quite a few in this song and if you have a significant other, you can have her um, uh, sing out the parts in the original re recording of his wife, which sounds kind of comical. But uh, nonetheless, that's searching the desert for the blues. And try to, taking from what you learned here, try to apply it against his other songs like Lord Send Me an Angel and Talking to Myself Blues, which utilizes the same structures. Um, so we have capped off 
all of our material uh, material looking at the key of E with McTell that features out of this ebook. What's remaining now are three songs. There's one more in the key of G and then the last in the key of C. But we've had three lessons in a row where we've looked at the key of E. So right now you should be pretty familiar with playing and that style. And when you once you get through this, everything will roll roll fluidly. So again, if you haven't already, I'm going to conclude here with this lesson. It's a shorter lesson, but if you haven't already, definitely check out this ebook available on my ebook store. Uh, if you haven't already, like me on Delta Lou Music on my Facebook page. That I put post out a lot of news there. Anytime there's a development, new lessons that I'm working on, I post there. Subscribe to me on YouTube. And um, check out my website. There's so much free material, free ebooks for you to keep this music alive. So, once again, this is Delta Lou signing off. Thank you very much for um, following along. Good night.